Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf and to another video in the Men Bookering series. Um, I did a video when the long list was announced, I will leave a link down below if you're interested, and I told you in uh, I think one of my books weekly also that I will do book reviews of the books written by female authors because in the second shelf only do female authors and there are six books long listed by female authors and this is the first video about two of them the two debut authors the two debut novels and that's History of Wolves by Emily Friedland an American author from Minnesota and El Met by Fiona Mosley a British author First, Emily Friedland's History of Wolves. Now, this is the story of 14-year-old Linda, who lives with her ex-commune parents in an ex-commune in, um, in Minnesota, in the countryside, near a forest, near a lake. And they live in quite dire circumstances in the sense that the house is more a shed. So it, it's, it's not a very... Yeah, it's not a very homely atmosphere Linda lives in. Um, Linda goes to high school, and I think the the main story, there are two storylines, but they are both about Linda's wish to fit in, to be accepted, to be able to attach herself to somebody. So the two storylines that I mentioned is first her relationship with Mr. Grierson, a new history teacher um, who encourages Linda and uh, to enter a competition in history, but that doesn't go so well, not only the competition, but it turns out that Mr. Grierson is accused of sexually abusing a classmate of Linda's, Lily, that accusation might or might not be true, but there is child pornography discovered on his computer and Mr. Grierson ends up in jail. Um, and then, you know, we, f we follow uh, this storyline through. And what I'm telling you is not, not spoilers because that will come out quite uh, soon in the beginning. The other um, even more, maybe even more important storyline is the relationship of Linda with her two new neighbors. Uh, or three new neighbors, I should say. It's a young couple, Petra and Leo, with a son, Paul, four, year, four years old, and they move across, you see the lake here, they move across the lake from Linda's house, and Linda starts to babysit Paul. That doesn't go so well either, because already on the second or third page, we learn that Paul died. So that's not a spoiler either, because uh, she says, Friedland says in the very first pages, um, that uh, Paul will die, um, but the 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 main the, the both of those storylines, like I said, I think are there to show us how lonely Linda is and how much she wants to belong somewhere to somebody and what she will do, like it says here, what you would do to belong. Um, so the, the parents, uh, Paul's parents, they are quite weird people. There's some religious uh, thing going on there and we learn later um, exactly what kind of religion and how that relates to Paul's, uh, Paul's death. But the book is not so much about the plot, about what happened to Paul, but it's really the center, the central character or, or the central theme of the book is really Linda and her loneliness and her, her, her eagerness to belong somewhere. And I think that Emily Friedland really did a, a very good job in, in getting that across. The, the book is told from Linda's perspective, but not Linda as a 14-year-old, but later when she's a grown woman, she tells us the story. And still, I I really felt the 14-year-old the in the book and the way she is treated in school and she's called a freak and a commie because of her, you know, ex, her parents live in, belong to a commune. So I thought that was really very good. And if you enjoyed, if you remember from last year, if you enjoyed Eileen by Otessa Moshfeck, then this might be a book for you. I enjoyed Eileen very much and I enjoyed this book uh, a lot. But it received mixed reviews, I have to say that. And it's certainly not for everybody, especially because Linda is not presented as a very likable character. 
my interpretation is like with Eileen, that is done on purpose because Linda doesn't like herself very much. So she thinks of herself as a not very likable person and that's the way she is presented. Um, but not everybody could connect with it. If you look at the reviews on Booktube, a lot of people had difficulties with that. But for me, it was a really strong debut, a debut novel, um, uh, and I hope it will make it to the shortlist. And then on to the second debut novel on the shortlist, and that is Fiona Mosley's El Met. Now, first about the title. El Met was um, apparently the last Celtic kingdom uh, in, in England, but even later in the 17th century, up to the late 17th century, it was um, a sort of a badlands, a, refuge, a, a, a place for refugees from the law. So that's what I learned when I looked up the, the title. I just wanted to let you know that. Fiona Mosley is a, a, a very young novelist. She's only in her late 20s, and it's, of course, fantastic that with her first novel at this this early in her career, she makes a long list. And I thought the novel was fantastic. I It was one of my big surprises. I've never, obviously had never heard of her. Um, and I was really um, pleasantly surprised. And I thought it was a f fantastic book. But to the story, the story is told from um, one perspective, Daniel, um, um, 14 year old, year old boy um, but we see him once when he is heading north looking for somebody and uh, once in in the past when he tells us about his life with his older sister Kathy and his father whom he refers to only as daddy. The three live without a mother we will learn later what happened to the mother also in the woods so the setting um, is not in in the Minnesota Minnesota woods um, like in in History of Wolves, but it's in York. But it's it's a similar setting, quite lonely. It's an, a family that lives apart from others. Uh, the father built the house they live in um, with his own hands. Um, and the children, Kathy and Daniel, they went to school in the past, but now they don't go to school anymore. So the, the idea of this f boy, in this case, it's a boy with the, the history of wolves, it's a, it's a girl telling the story, but they are set apart. Um, and the, the story in, in El Met, uh, the main story, not the one where Daniel is heading north, there are only s small snippets of that in between, but the main story is the story Daniel tells us about the life in the house his father built and what his father does for a living. He used to be a, a, a boxer, boxing for money. Um, he's very physical, he can be very violent, but n don't get me wrong, not with the children, but he is a man who is, you know, employed by other people because of his physical strength and also because he knows how to fight. Um, and the, the house is built on a land that is later claimed by one of the local big men that it's his land and the story evolves from there, the conflict between uh, the family and uh, the landowner, and I'm not going to tell any more because in this case it would be spoilers, but that's the, the central plot line. But like with History of Wolves, it's a book much more about the atmosphere, and I thought uh, Fiona Mosley did a brilliant job getting the atmosphere across of this uh, almost archaic life or the family foraging and hunting, um, living in this house that the father built. Um, also the relationship between Daniel and his older sister, Kathy, and the difficulties that uh, Kathy has with uh, boys who are after her and um, not very pleasant experiences with, with local boys. Um, and the main thing that drew me in is what is, was really the, the, like I said, the atmosphere of the book and how I, I'm, I'm a city girl. <laughs> I have no, never lived in the countryside, 
but I could really sense how it felt for Daniel to live there and how much he loves his father and his sister and under the uh, almost romantic idea of living uh, you know in the country there is this constant feeling that something bad will happen uh, and you feel that from the first page and I thought that was really brilliantly done that you can feel that there is some you know dread and some uh, danger lurking so I, I thought it was uh, an even better debut than uh, History of Wolves. And if I had to make a choice between the two for, for the shortlist, I would probably pick El Met because it's so special. Also the, 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 the story and the way the story is told. But I love the book and I can certainly recommend it. So this is it for the first of the reviews of the long-listed books written by female authors on the Men Booker for the Men Booker 2017. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know down in the comments whether you read any of the two books, uh, what you thought of it, or whether you plan on reading them. them. And I will continue with the series um, beginning of next week, probably uh, with the two Smithers, so Ali Smith and Sadie Smith. And until then, um, uh, have a good day and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.